lotion on because I just washed my hands again. And I probably smell funny. <laughs> I know. It's time for eye drops. Just going to give him some two bricks. Oh, got it. You have to have good aim with kittens. He's not at all sure. He likes what I've just done to him. It's okay, buddy. It builds character. So I'm just giving him a little eye drop for his, um, he has one eye that's, that's just a little, it's been a little, a little runny and a little red looking. So, uh, we were keeping an eye on it. And uh, since it doesn't seem, it's not getting any worse, but it hasn't been getting any better. So we're going to give him a little help. Just a little help. There you go, buddy. You're so cute. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, yes. You're so adorable. He is very cute as a pirate. Everyone else is good. Oh my goodness, he's so big and pudgy. I know. What? I know, buddy. He's so handsome. Everyone else is getting milk bar now. These are some nice, solid, pudgy kittens. Just the way I like them. Just the way I like them. Mm. Little baby. Oh my goodness, it's okay. I'm going to try to take a few pictures because I have not been doing as many. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, I was such a good boy. Such a good boy. Oh, Mama, I know I'm making all the babies squeak. They're all squeaking. <laughs> oh, Aurora. Aurora. Aurora has had an ear growth spurt, I think. Half of the pictures of Aurora have mom photobombing in the background. <laughs> there we go. Put my baby back. There she is. She's fine. She's fine. Oh, what a good mama. What a good mama. Oh my goodness. These babies must be little, little suckers. This one gets a little noisy too sometimes. This guy right here. Um, are you gonna be a good boy? Oh, Pip. Oh, Mr. Pip. Aurora sneaking in from the other side.
Izzy, what you doing? What you doing? Oh, you're such a good little mama. Such a good mama. All right, so eye drops. We'll add eye drops to the routine. If you're watching the Sloney cam, uh, Sloney has been napping uh, at the window, on the windowsill. Um, and she will go back to the babies when they wake up and start squeaking, but they're fine. It's nice and warm in there. They've got, they're on a blanket for the moment. She had a little snack. And she's just taking a little break. It's a little bit noisy upstairs right now. You may have noticed. I'm sure you did. Because uh, there are people up there walking around. But, um... Oh, you're such a good mama. Such a good mama. They all had good weight gains. Sloney's kittens did. Because uh, I was actually able to weigh them today, which was great. Um, because Sloney was not uh, in the nest. She actually had gone into hiding because of the noises upstairs. Um, and so when I went in, I was able to very quickly weigh the kittens, make sure that they, they all had good weight gains, which I was happy about. And um, I did put a blanket in part of the dirt nest so that they have, uh, maybe then uh, Sloney will accept a blanket and it will get their scent on it and stuff. So we'll see how that goes. She may not like it, but. Uh, yeah. So they're in there, just snoozing. So everything's going well. Interesting. That is interesting. Is it interesting, little mama? It kind of is. Someone has special ears. <laughs> Yoda ears. Aurora and Pip. <laughs> oh, Cyrus is giving mommy kisses.
holding them upside down because that's what that's the first thing most adopters will do is pick them up and hold them like a baby um, just looking in their ears and opening their mouth things like that so that when they go to the vet they're not as they're not as stressed and they're easier to examine so it's all stuff that I think most fosters do to get them ready for adoption and give them the best chance at um, being successful. We see a lot of cats returned, well not, not returned after adoption at lapse, but like um, surrendered um, because they scratch the furniture and they uh, are difficult to to have their nails trimmed. They, they don't like having their nails trimmed, so people just give up on them. So we try to identify anything like that that we can address early on. And um, if, a cat, if the cat's nails are easy to trim, then the owners are more likely to trim the nails, and then the cats are less likely to cause damaged furniture. So uh, just stuff like that to either reduce stress on the cat in the future or to improve the uh, probability of success when they're adopted. <laughs> Although, yeah, um, my, my cats, P.A. Roo, Panther Roo, my cat, one of my cats um, loves to scratch on the arm of the chair. So, um, and no number of scratching posts will deter him or sticky tape or anything. Um, so I just need to get a chair with different fabric that he doesn't like to scratch because for some reason the fabric is like the best thing ever to him. But um, so you can't, you can't always avoid stuff like that, but you can make it easier to manage, which will make them more successful. Yeah, leather usually works pretty well, or that, or micro suede, microfiber. He's very naughty, but he's so cute. Otto, he's just the cutest. Everybody's eating right now. Did you have enough to eat? <laughs> so I have to get another scale today because I'm using the the other scale in with the Sloney kittens and I don't want to transfer back and forth because it may um, have germs on it. So I'm just going to get another one. You guys sent a bunch of scales last year, which was awesome because um, most foster parents don't have little food scales. And so it's nice to be able to lend them out and then um, they can weigh the kittens at home, which is very helpful. Right, little mama? And I need to get some more food and litter. Oh, so, what else? I got distracted. Um, I've heard of one, I've heard of one, um, medical reason that, that did legitimately justify a decline. Um, but other than that, we definitely do not, um, do not support declawing at all. Um, but they're they're actually. I thought the same thing when I when I heard about this. But then um, after speaking to the vet, it was actually the right decision. In that scenario, I don't think it's a very common scenario. But um, oh my goodness, someone is so hungry. Try this side, buddy. There's like four right there. Pip. Pip was getting rowdy. And now the milk bar is going to leave. <laughs> yes, I know, hi. I did open her window to let a little fresh air in, but I'm going to close it. 
Um, Dr. Ferguson, actually, she said she, she wants to come by soon, so um, she's been super busy helping us with all sorts of, we've had just the craziest month with kitten season. Um, just, you name it, it's happened. And we have all these bottle feeders and she's been doing emergency C-sections right and left and just crazy stuff. So um, I've been trying not to bug her with, with stuff that's not an emergency. So um, but uh, she will she will probably come in the next week or two um, and these guys are healthy and there's nothing um, that I'm concerned about with them which is good so um, we can go a little longer Um, will I foster Sloan's kittens until adoption? So that is a good question. Um, I will have to see how everything goes. Um, if Sloane continues to care for them until they're weaned, which is the ideal scenario, which we're hoping for, um, then they will need to be socialized. So they'll need a lot of time and attention from humans. Um, and then they'll be totally fine. They'll be like these guys and nobody will even know that they were born to a feral mama. Um, but they need a, they will need some a, a lot of time. Um, so if I am able to devote enough time to them, I will definitely keep them because you know that I will be attached to them. So it would be hard to give them up, but um, if that's in their best interest, then I will do it. Um, there's a slight chance I might be able to integrate them with Eve's kittens, but like I said, not unless they're, they're healthy and there's no risk of these guys getting sick and you know Eve would have to be okay with it so uh, I don't know what's going to happen I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow I mean she might decide you know tomorrow or a week from now or two weeks from now that she's done and she's ready to go back and so I have to be prepared for that too so every day every additional day that she cares for them is a huge gift um, although she certainly seems um, content and happy, um, as content and happy as, 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 you know, a feral cat can be in containment. So, um, I'm not, I'm not nearly as concerned that she will, uh, stop caring for them. Although certainly if there was some sort of stressful incident, um, it's still possible. So, I'm not taking anything for granted, um, but this is a situation where it's impossible to predict because every feral cat reacts differently. The environment has a big effect on how they do um, the health of the kittens, the health of the mom, all those things are factors and so it's, it's just really impossible to predict. She does look very cozy right now, though. Oh, I think I might go upstairs. All right. <laughs> They're so adorable. Look how sweet. <laughs> Aurora has had enough. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. Mm. What you doing? Huh? All right, everybody. I'm gonna go get back to work. I don't even remember why I came in here. Oh, eye drops. Eye drops for Mr. Cyrus. All right, everybody. Enjoy. Oh, and I do have some boxes. Some very fun boxes that have arrived um, over the last week or so that I will have an opening. Uh, I will have. I will schedule something and it will open. It will be very fun.